hopefully that by this point you have a, a pretty good understanding of how to simplify square roots and how to rationalize denominators and all those different things. Um, but what I want to look at here is some more advanced type square root questions um, that you may see on the Pennsylvania Keystone exam. So that these are you know, maybe commonly asked questions that you may run into. And on the Keystones, they rarely ask things in a very simple, straightforward way. They're usually going to have you think outside the box a little bit with what you already know. So let's read this question here. It says, for which value of x could the expression below be further simplified? And we've got the square root of 21x, and we've got these four choices down here, 10, 14, 11, and 38. Um, at this point, feel free to pause the video, give this a shot on your own, see if you could figure out um, what this would be. But when they say further simplified, what they mean is that one of these perfect squares at the top, if we plug one of these answers in, we should be able to take one of these perfect squares out, or maybe something bigger. It might be, you know, I, I've gone up to 10 here, but it could go higher than 10. Um, and there's a few ways we can do this. One possible answer is you can start by plugging in 10. And you could take that, okay, so 21 times 10 is the square root of 210. And then you could try to simplify that by pulling a perfect square out. You may, again, have to go bigger on your list if, if your numbers are a little bigger. Um, so that would be one option. That one will take a little while, but it, again, you're not timed on the Keystone test, so that's you know a totally valid option. This one would not have any perfect squares that come out, um, but you'd have to check each one by plugging it in to see what would happen. Now, maybe a faster option would be this. If we look at perfect squares, if I had a number and I wrote its prime factorization, meaning you know I wrote down each of the different uh, different prime number factors for this. If I have two matching factors, that's going to be the same as having a perfect square. So if I had, for example, some prime factorization that was like 3 times 3, that would be the same as having a 9 in the number. So if I took something like 24, for example, and I wrote the prime factor, so 24 we could split up into, let's say, 6 times 4. And we can actually already see 4 is a perfect square. But notice here that if I make this a 3 times 2 and I make this a 2 times 2, this right here will give me a perfect square, any two matching factors. All right, so let's now take this back to our example over here. And what I'm going to do is try to find the prime factorization of 21. And that's a pretty easy one. That's just 7 times 3. And if we make that into a factor tree, that's about as, as, you know, as split up as we can get here. Now, if I can find a matching factor here in one of these possible uh, answers, then we must have the correct answer because that's going to have a perfect square hidden in it. So let's start with 10. 10 we can split up into 2 times 5. I don't see a 2 that matches or a 5 that matches, so we have to move on here. 14, that'll be 7 times 2. And notice, we actually now have a matching factor. We've got a 7 and a 2. So that should give us a 49 that we could take out on the inside. Now, we'll, we'll keep going here for now, so we'll cross this one out. Just to be safe, there's not another one, and we made a mistake. Um, 11, that's already split up, so that's just plain old 11. Uh, nothing matches up here. And then 38, that's going to be 19 and 2, which, again, doesn't have any matching factors. So just to show you and check that this is going to work, Let's, let's plug this in here. So let's write the square root of 21 times 14. And then if we, you know, can't do that in our head, we could always take out our calculator and take our 21 times 14, and we'll come up with 294. And if you start dividing your perfect squares into this, we already know that 49 is going to go in since we found a 7 and a 7 that match. But we should find that a 49 comes out, and when we take that 49 out, we should be left with a 6. And now this expression then can be further simplified to 7 root 6. So the only possible answer here that would further simplify this expression would be 14 because the factors match. All right, I'm going to skip to another one just like this because these are very uh, popular keystone test questions. Okay, so now we've got this next one. Again, I encourage you to pause the video at this point. I want you to give this one a try, very similar to the one we just did. And uh, if you pause the video, great. Hopefully you've got this one correct. But again, I want to look at which of these has a matching factor with this 15 on the inside. So let's check here. We've got a 5 times a 3, so there's no perfect squares. There's no matching factors here uh, to start with. 
But if we look through our list, again, 13, these actually are all prime numbers already, but the only one that's gonna match here would be a five. And if I plug the five in for x, I'd get, again, you don't have to do this step if you feel confident, but this helps you see how this works. The square root of 15 times five gives me the square root of 75. And then 75 can be split up into 25 times three. And that 25 will come out to give us five root three. So you can see that that will be further simplified if we plugged in a five. You could plug in all the other numbers if you want and try to take out perfect squares, but you should not find any if you do it correctly. All right, different type of question here. So another popular uh, keystone test type question would be one like this. It says, which value of x makes the expression true? So we're looking for which of these values of, or excuse me, not which value of x, but we're, there, this is not multiple choice, although on the keystones it probably will be. We're trying to find out what would make this expression, if we plug something in for x, equal to this expression. There's a whole bunch of ways we can do this, but this sometimes uh, is gonna be the easiest, well, well, I'll explain this two different ways. So one way, this would be the longer way, but sometimes this makes more sense to people. Um, notice that we have a five here on the outside, and now we've got a 20 here on the outside. Something must have come out of here to give us a 20 on the outside, and to do that, something in here must have multiplied this five by four to give us a 20. Since the seven on the inside is still the same, nothing really crazy happened with that seven. All that happened was we took the square root of something and a four came out. So that could give you a hint for what the possible answer could be. Um, so that would be maybe the shorter way. I won't tell you the answer just yet. Here's the longer way. We could also write all of these things under a single radical. So imagine that if there's a five on the outside, I could plug that five back under the radical if I squared it. So when I take things out of the radical, I square root them. When I plug them back in, I square them. So if I take this here, this could be the same as the square root of seven times 25 times x. And over here, again, if I plug this into the radical, tw uh, 20 squared is 400. So this would be the same as seven times 400. And now, actually, at this point, I can drop the radicals since both of these things are under the radical. I'm uh, allowed to drop this and solve these under the radical separately. So what I'm going to do here is write down that this is 175x. And then over here, the square root here of this one, excuse me, the, these two multiplied together should give, yeah, can't talk, together should give me a 2800. And now finally, all we have to do is solve this like an equation. We just have to divide the 175 over. And if we do just that, we're going to get that x is equal to 16. Okay, so there must have been a 16 in here. Now, always a good idea to check your answer. I encourage you to plug that 16 back in for x and then try to simplify that square root and see if it gives you that 20 on the outside. Okay, again, if you pull the 16 out, that gives you a four on the outside and that's how that five became a 20. We multiplied it, uh, multiplied them together. Okay, one more time here again, I encourage you to pause this video and try this, try this example on your own. See if you can figure out which expression makes this true. Uh, and if you did not, or if you gave it a try, great. Um, what we'll do again is we're gonna put these numbers back into the radical and remember to put things back in the radical, instead of square rooting them, we have to square them. So on the inside here, we're gonna have the square root of 15 times four times x. And that will equal over here, we got uh, six times square root of five. Again, we're gonna take the square root of 36 times five because uh, if I plug a six back in, we have to square it. And now we're just gonna clean this up. So over here on the left, we're going to uh, have, excuse me, 60x. Again, they're both under the radical, so we're good. We don't, have to, um, we don't have to do anything. We can square both sides if we want to, but it's not necessary. Um, over here, we get a 180. And then finally, if I divide by 60 here on both sides, we should get that x is equal to three. Once again, we can always check our answer by plugging this back in. We'll get two times the square root of 15 times three, if we plug this back in, I'll check this one. This would give us the square root of 45. And this would then split up into root nine times root five times two. And then now that that's split up again, we can take the square root of nine, which is three. 
and that would just give me 6 root 5. So again, this is a little introduction to some tougher radical questions that may come up on the Pennsylvania Keystone test. Um, hopefully this gave you a, you know, a good little introduction to trickier types of radical questions, but uh, if you're good with simplifying, all of the, the steps that you used before are still helpful. Uh, and again, I hope this helps you out if you are someone that is taking the uh, Keystone test in spring.